Alex. Alex Marshall, who's president of the Independent Workers' Union of Great Britain. Hello, Alex. Yeah, good evening. Hi. Hi. I'm well. Thanks for, for coming along, Alex. First of all, the, the ruling, you're very happy with that, am I guessing? Um, so, it's, it's kind of mixed emotions. I mean, when I first heard it, I was pleasantly surprised. I had kind of expected Uber to do everything they could to sort of isolate um, the Supreme Court ruling that as a trade union we were mobilising, we were getting ready to organise to make sure, you know, they didn't try and wriggle out of this. Yes. Um, so it was positive to see that they'd acknowledged that it was all 70,000 of the drivers that they said this 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 will reflect. Yeah. And also one of the big victories was that they openly admitted that flexibility and workers' rights could, you know, work together. You know, so many of these gig economy companies have tried to claim that, you know, you can't have flexibility and improve pay and conditions. But what Uber have openly acknowledged um, is that they can. However, um, as is the case of a lot of these companies, you know, the devil is in the detail. Yes. And, you know, they, they, they're trying to wriggle out of certain things. They said, oh, you know, these drivers will only get minimum wage and holiday pay when they have passengers on board. However, the Supreme Court ruled that it should be from the moment they log on. So kind of what we've got a situation here where Uber, as a gig economy company, uh, are sort of trying to say how employment law should be applied to them where the Supreme Court has actually said, no, this is it, it's very straightforward, you should respect it. And it's almost like Uber are trying to negotiate with how they think it should apply to them. So, yeah, you've got to keep an eye on it. There's various other, other details like this that are very unsatisfactory. Um, the way that they sort of said they'll calculate costs for drivers, you know, every driver will say that their costs differ from yeah. one another depending on, you know, what car they use, what fuel they use, all sorts of things like that. So... They're trying to say, you know, they'll, they'll decide various things, they'll decide. And, and the thing with the, um, the passengers and paying them only when, when they're on board, I mean, this is a breach of, of, like, national minimum wage. HMRC should be on this because you've got a company saying, you know what, even though the Supreme Court has said this, you know, we've decided we don't actually have to pay minimum wage for this time. So this, this is a criminal offence if they decide to not do that. So you're picking up from what you've heard so far, and as you said, there's a lot of detail still to be set out there, but your worry is that someone like Martin, who we were talking to just a moment ago, he may get all the flexibility that he wants to drive when he wants, to stay, stay at home when he wants, or do something else when he wants, but when he is working, he'll be losing money compared to what he's been enjoying. Well, I think, I think someone like Martin, who's worked for Uber for, for, for a while now, will, will know that while he's actually got passengers on, they're usually making the minimum wage for that journey time. But it's actually like when they don't have people on, when Uber still need these people to sort of be available to pick up passengers, Uber still need these people to be sitting around. <coughs> um, and that's when they won't be protected. And this is one of the, the major concerns for the drivers because they're still at work. Yeah. You know, they're not at home with their families. They're at work waiting to pick up jobs. And that's what the Supreme Court have said. And that's what Uber need to respect.